pretty volatile liquid at standard temperature and pressure on the Earth. So uh, the, that's a liquid and all the rest are solids if you don't count the noble gases of the nonmetals. So we should not say that nonmetals are gases. That's not a, there's not a one-to-one -one association there. All right. In order for me to use the periodic table as a guide uh, to draw my Bohr diagram, I have to pick my element. That's the, import, that's the first important step. So say an, an element's been assigned to me, let's say it was, uh, let's say it was arsenic, which would be right here. Uh, arsenic. Okay, um, I, my first thing to do is to draw the, to something to represent the nucleus. I'm going to differ from the way other people do their, show their nucleus. A lot of people show a big huge circle in the center there as, as the nucleus and they write the number of protons and neutrons in there. I like to bring home the point that the nucleus is really, really, really tiny. If you could expand an atom until the nucleus was the size of a shooter marble, something like that, uh, if you put it on the center field of a National Football League professional stadium, center field, middle of the 50-yard line, uh, if you had expanded the atom to the point where that, the nucleus was the size of that marble, the outer edge of the electron cloud would be as far out as the furthest seats in the stadium. So there's something on the order of a million times the radius to the, from the center of the atom to the outer edge of the electron cloud as there is from the center of the atom to the center of the nucleus, to the edge of the nucleus, pardon me. So I'm representing that as something very small. If it makes you feel better, we'll just put our number of protons and our number of neutrons down here just for bookkeeping. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons are neutral. These, both of these type of subatomic particles are located in this tiny pinpoint dot here, there in the nucleus. And how do we figure out uh, how many protons and neutrons we have? Well, I'll, I'll just draw you a blow-up of the arsenic box as it shows up on the table. And so it's got AS because the symbol for arsenic is as it should be. And we have 70... Uh, 74.922 for an atomic mass, and we have 33 for an atomic number. Now, 33 is technically the number of protons in an atom of arsenic. And if, it were any, if there were any other number of protons, it would not be arsenic. It would be some other element. Now, what we do to figure out the number of neutrons is we take the atomic mass, we round that number. That number, by the way, is not a pretty round number. It's not a... Uh, a nice round 75, because it's the average, the weighted average of the isotopes of arsenic as they occur on Earth. But we're going to round that to 75 and subtract 33 from it. So 75 minus 33, that's what, 42? And uh, so that's the number of neutrons there on this atom. It turns out uh, that if arsenic is pure, if it has not reacted and is still in its element form, it should be electrically neutral. That means it can't have a positive charge and can't have a negative charge. And here we see there are 33 positive charges in the nucleus. To make it neutral, there must also be 33 negative charges, and those, are, those come from the 33 electrons. So when we finish our Bohr diagram, it should have 33 dots on it, representing 33 electrons. All right. First thing is... After we found the, the, after we indicated the position of the nucleus, is to draw the number of circles for our diagram. And circles on this diagram represent energy levels. So, uh, energy levels on the periodic table are represented by row numbers, by periods. And so, the arsenic is on the fourth energy level. So, I better draw four circles. One, two, three, four. Now I want to point out that this does not re represent orbitals. Orbitals are the volume in space that can be occupied by a maximum of two electrons. There can be more than one orbital in an energy level. When we show these circles here, we're not showing orbitals there. We're showing energy levels. The circle represents an energy level. So the row on the periodic table represents an energy level, and the circle on the Bohr diagram represents an energy level, and we're going to use that correspondence 
to fill in our board diagram. Okay, on the first row, there are two boxes. I'm going to count that as meaning two electrons, and I put them in a pair because they end up filling up one single orbital. Uh, on the second row, which represents the second energy level, which is represented as a, the second circle here, I'm going to put my first two electrons, represented by the first two boxes, and then there are six more boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, in the P subshell. These two were in the S subshell. Those six are in the P subshell. If there are six electrons in the P subshell of the second energy level, then there must be three orbitals because an orbital can hold a maximum of how many electrons? Two. So if there are six electrons, that must be three pairs of electrons. And um, since those are all P subshell orbitals, they have the same energy. You can think of it as potential energy. And so um, they're going to fill separately and individually first and then we'll double up on electrons so that we end up with a total of six P subshell electrons. So uh, we have finished counting over to the end of the second row and I've put a dot here for a box there. Right? Every time I counted a box there I put a dot here. So at the end of the second row we come back over to the third row. We're in the S subsection. Uh, which represents the S subshell in the energy level. Third energy level. Two boxes in the S, they go together, the, the dots represented, representing the electrons go together in the same orbital. Then there are again six P subshell electrons, those are in the third energy level. I'm going to put them in individually just because they would fill in individually and separately first. And then there would be some doubling up. Okay. And so we've finished counting over to here on the periodic table. So we finished the, the third row. We go back to the fourth row. On the fourth row, we start in the S section. And we put those first two electrons in there. Now, I'm going to add in some numbering here that's not on your periodic table, but it's to remind you of a pattern of the way these things fill. It turns out this the way this periodic table is constructed, and, and it's constructed so we can count boxes to fill in a Bohr diagram like this. They represent uh, the way things fill, the way electrons fill in an atom. If you could imagine having just the arsenic nucleus, just the 33 protons and the 42 neutrons and no electrons on it, and we were throwing it in, some electrons, and the electrons were coming in, they would be filling in from the lowest energy level first, and once that was filled up, they'd fill, start filling in the second energy level. And once that was filled up, they'd start filling in the third energy level and so forth. They'd go from, fill in from lowest to highest. Okay? Um, and so we've been following that pattern as we walked across the periodic table from left to right, counting boxes on the individual rows. Well, when we get, it turns out, if we were to throw in the next electron after this second one that went into the 4S subshell, it would go into the 3 D subshell. So I'm going to write a 3 here, a 4 here, a 5 here, a 6 here to remind us that when, the D, when you're counting boxes in the D subsection, they, go, they represent electrons that go into the energy level that's one inward from the energy level with the same number as the row. So I've got how many boxes here in the D subsection? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It means there must be 5 pairs of electrons in the D subshell of the third energy level, five orbitals. And so I'm going to fill them in individually first, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to double up, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we have a total of 18 electrons in the third energy level, and we have finished counting over to here, the end of the D section on the fourth row. And it turns out that if we kept throwing in the electrons, they, the, the next electron would go into the 4P subshell. And so I'm going to write 5, 6, 7 here to remind us that when you get into the P subsection of the, of the periodic table, you're actually, uh, the boxes actually can be used to represent the electrons going into the P subshell of the energy level that has the same number as the row. So, and we're almost done here, notice. We're getting to our arsenic, our target, and uh, there are only three boxes. Here's an important rule. 
when counting electrons this way to fill them into your Bohr diagram, you need to be uh, counting up to and including the box that has the symbol for the element that you're representing in the Bohr diagram. So we've got three boxes to go. One, two, three. They're in the fourth energy level in the P subshell. Those are going to be equivalent energy level, uh, equivalent energies, and so they fill individually separately first. And we're done. That's arsenic. Uh, I hope you'll be able to use the periodic table to draw your free body, uh, to draw, I'm sorry, not free body diagrams, to draw your uh, Bohr diagrams here. Uh, it's such a simple tool. You don't have to go memorizing things. Notice uh, we did fill up the third energy level. It has 18 electrons. There's a pair here. S three pairs there, so that's six. Six plus two is eight. We've got 10 more there, so that's a total of 18 electrons that can fit in the third energy level. Let me just show you in case you get on down here to the sixth row. If you get some element beyond here, you'll notice that as you're counting along, the atomic numbers go jump, have a big jump from something like 57 to 57 or 56 here, sorry. This is uh, 56 to something like 72. Uh, to 72 next door, and the 57's down here. So, uh, sometimes they'll have 57 here and 58 here, but my point being that you follow the atomic numbers as you as, when you're counting boxes for electrons, and so it turns out that just as we renumbered here for the D section, we're going to renumber on the F section, and the top row, the, the uh, lanthanide series, this top row here on F, is the lanthanide series and uh, it represents the 4F subshell. So, look, the first subshell could hold two electrons, the second could hold eight. We counted one, two, and six, that's eight. The third could hold two, six, and ten, that's eighteen. The fourth can hold two, six, that's eight, ten, that's eighteen, and then fourteen across here. Eighteen and fourteen is thirty-two. So you can fit 32 electrons into the fourth energy level, but you never count beyond, you never go down the table and count beyond the element whose symbol you wrote. We, don't, we will only end up with five electrons for arsenic in its five valence electrons in its fourth energy level in this case, um, because we stop counting when we hit the box that has the symbol for the element. We include we count that box, but we stop there. I hope this helps.